Now I want to continue, as we discussed before earlier in our second, our, our first two podcasts. We're talking about the parable of the sower. Now I want us to go deeply into Mark chapter 4 because it is really a powerful, powerful um, chapter here that really needs to be soaked in. Let's go down to the parable of the lamp under a basket. So let's go down to verse 21. We're continuing. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought is a candle brought to be under a bushel or under a bed? And not to be set on a candlestick. Now I'm gonna pause here. Um here. So as I said earlier in, our, in my other podcast, we were talking about the first few uh, script, the passage, the first few verses concerning the power of the sword and how it talks about the foundation of the word of God and also the establishment of the word of God and where we need to establish it in our lives and how we should live it out, make sure we are doing it, make sure that everything that we do as up to what we're doing in this in this Bible, in this Word of God that we read every day, make sure that now I'm gonna now I, I want to go deeper into that. I was talking about before that we, I'm gonna talk about how faith really works with this Word of God. Now I was talking about here and um, it talks about here how a candle. This question here is: Should candle be brought under a bushel under a bed? Should it be placed under a candlestick? Is a lamb brought to be under a basket, under a bed, or not put on a stand? For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifested. Now, I want you to pause right here. What I got from this, what I got from this here. Talking about a light, a lamp, light of a candle, a lamp. So, if you ever, like, have you ever seen a, um, a lamp before? If you ever see a lamp A lamp is always, you know, you always see, like many of us have. What do you notice about a lamp is this. There is something like a dome protecting the lamp. The light comes through down and illuminates the whole room. But yet there is something there that is covering the lamp. There's like a protection. It's like a guard covering the lamp, making sure that it sustains the light that is in it. It's not really hiding the lamp, but making sure that it illuminates, but at the same time, it's illuminating the place, but at the same time, it's protecting, it's protecting the light that is in it. That light is the word of God. And as you may say, where if we go back to Psalms chapter 119, it talks about how the word of God is a light, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. So the word of God is a light. Now, what is it that holds this light firm? As you can see, if you look at it on Google, that lambs, that lambs, there's a covering, there's a covering over that lamp, even though it's still luminous through a whole room, there's something that just covers it. The way I see it here, that covers the lamp, spiritually, I'm speaking this spiritually, is faith. Now, um... It says a lamp is brought is a lamp to be brought under a basket or under a bed should not be put on a stand. For nothing is nothing is hidden, for nothing is him except to be made manifest. Nothing is secret except to become to life. Hmm. So it's just saying here that the light. The light, the word of God, should not be remain hidden at all. It should not even be remain hidden. 
It should be seen in our whole life. It should be seen. And how is this word, how is God's word supposed to be seen in our lives? I said before, to what we do, how we live our lives, how we speak to people, how do we approach situations. How we conduct ourselves. That shows. That we are living by the word of God. The faith being the holder. What does it mean? Faith being the holder of the light. Faith being the covering. Now. You cannot. You cannot have the word of God. As a Christian. Let me, let me, let me put this in. Good, um, good terms. Yeah, you cannot have, you cannot say that you as a Christian having the Word of God, having the Bible out in front of you, and not believe what it says. Where do we come to know that? We come to know that by faith. We believe in this Word. We believe in this Word. We believe this word is true from God's words. And, you know, we've been talking about this early in my other podcast, that God's word is used for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. The word of God is believable. The word of God is believable. If you do not believe the word of God, as what I said before, my other podcast, you cannot bear fruit in him. You have to put in the faith. You have to believe. You have to believe. That's where faith comes in. Faith being the holder of a lamb. Now, in those days, now in those days, it's not like the lamb that we have. In those days, they'll have like a... I don't know, like a, I don't know, a carved wooden something, wooden, and there will be a fighter, but there will be like, it will be like a candle, candle something, and they used these things back then, the wooden, what they carved, I don't know what they call it, but basically, they will have like this wooden thing underneath it, and the can, and the fire of the candle will be blowing in. So back then, you could be understand that that wooden thing will be sustaining the fire. The fire will continue to go up, but yet that wooden thing is is like is holding, is making sure that that fire does not go any other direction, but make sure that it continues to go up. That is how. That is how that you see that wooden. Um, basically, what I pertains here is that's how our faith is supposed to be. Our faith is supposed to be. So sturdy that even the fire that is coming out of it cannot go either direction. It's continually to keep going up. That is how our faith is supposed to be. Our faith is supposed to be that strong. Our faith is supposed to be that. It's supposed to be that fervent. That withstanding any obstacles, any obstacles, even we can go back. We were even talking about that in other podcasts about. Um, how the word of God, people hear it, and they don't have faith in him. They don't have faith that, that, they don't have faith that even in their situation, they don't have faith that God can bring them out. They don't have faith. They don't have faith. If you don't have faith in God's word, it's all dead. It's useless. Why have the word of God and not believe in it? Why have not the word of God and not use it and believe in it and have the faith? And make sure that faith is deeply rooted within you and produce fruits. And when situations and circumstances come in your life, you will be proven that, you will be proven that whatever situation comes in your life, the word of God is always there to back it up. And the faith that you have will be even more increasing. Because... The circumstances and the situation that come in your life, they show you 
we're in the level of faith, we're in the level of Christianity, we're in the level of, in your Christian walk, you are in. They really show you where, they really, it really, it really shows you where you are in your faith. It really does. It really shows you where you are. So our faith needs to be very, very fervently strong. Very fervently strong. My prayer is that the faith that you have needs to be strong. Needs to be really, really strong. And even, and now, <laughs> it just brings me really, really, because now that we're talking about faith now, it really brings me back to Hebrews chapter 11. It really talks about faith. Is the substance, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, oh, verse 3 really breaks it down. Verse 3 in Hebrews 11 says, Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, and the things that were seen were not made, were not made of things that which do appear. The faith, we understand that the world was framed by God's spoken mouth. It takes faith to believe that God created this world. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he willingly did this. And he willingly created this world for our good. It takes faith to believe that. You know, and you even go down the scripture here. Hebrews 11 talks about how the faith of these, all these heroes of faith. And I just want to talk about Abraham. Abraham. By faith, Abraham, he was called to go into a place which he should receive for an inheritance and obey. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac, with Isaac and Jacob in heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Wow. By faith, Abraham went somewhere. God told Abraham to go. Go to a place where I'll show you. He told Abraham to leave Haran, where he was, and to go into the land of Israel, which not really Israel in their time, but God already established it to be the land of the Jews. What talks about faith here, it talks about here, is that really brings it, really spotted me out here was that he obeyed. And it talks about that he never even, he didn't even know, he didn't even understand what God wanted from him. But what did he do here? He obeyed. He believed it by faith. He didn't really understood it. You know, his father died. His father, Terah, died. He's still struggling with the with the death of his father. And he's leaving the land of Ur. And he went to Haran. You know, trying to start a new family life there. And then God just comes out, you know, out of nowhere. And he tells him that, leave this land and go to the land that I will show you of. And I will bless thee. And I will bless you. And he tells Abraham to go there. And he tells Abraham to do this by faith. Abraham doesn't even know where he's going. He doesn't know that there may be um, robbers. or He doesn't know that there may be other countries there. But God told him to go there. Now this really, really specifies. This really specifies here our obedience. Not only he believed in him, but he obeyed. This really specifies his obedience to God, even when he doesn't under, he doesn't understand the the circumstance that he's in. He doesn't really understand, you know, going to another country that he doesn't know of. What are the, what are the chances that he may be killed? What are the chances that he may go through so many things? And yet, still, he still took his whole family out, his livestock. He took Lot with him, and he went to the land of Canaan. And God, God really blessed him for that. So going back here, going back here, Mark chapter 4, 
what faith really does 